The hair industry is a multi-million naira business in Nigeria. The industry has experienced impressive growth in recent years. From the sale of hair extensions, wigs, and hair care products, it is a huge market and it is largely buoyed by patronage from women. Women are mostly identified by their hair. But does that mean without hair they have no identity? Definitely not. There is a condition called alopecia. It causes the partial or complete absence of hair from areas of the body where it normally grows. And for women who have it, they experience baldness. We met an alopecian, Jasmine Oguns, who shared her story with us. Alopecia is an autoimmune disease, but we alopecians like to define it as an autoimmune condition, so we don't scare people. So alopecia is an autoimmune condition that happens when the immune system attacks the hair follicles, thereby causing partial or total hair loss. You know, the immune system is actually supposed to protect us from germs, diseases and sickness. But in this case, the immune system attacks the hair follicles because it sees the hair follicles as a stranger to the body system, so it attacks it. And once the hair follicles get attacked, then there's a problem in the roots of hair growth. Yeah, so that's where hair loss starts from. I started having hair loss in 2004. That was my first year in school in high institution. Before then, I used to have very long hair, like very beautiful hair. And um, a particular day, I went to the salon and my hairstylist noticed a bald patch behind my head, just around here. It was very tiny, very insignificant, but she noticed it because she has been making my hair for a, a long time, yeah, so she noticed it and called my attention to it, but I didn't pay so much attention to it because I felt it was a minor thing and my hair was going to grow back, so after two weeks, I went back to make my hair. She noticed another one on this side. She called my attention to it again, so I became scared. I informed my mom about it, and my mom also didn't see it as a big issue. She just she just said it would grow back. And after a while, the patches started increasing, and they started forming a map on my scalp. I stopped going to the salon to make my hair. It became a thing of concern, and someone told my mom it was lakpa lakpa, caused by dandruff. But then I didn't have dandruff, so where did it come from? So she got sulfur, started applying sulfur on the scalp. But instead of it to get better, it got worse. That was how the alopecia journey started for me. How I knew it was alopecia. Um, okay, before I got to that point, it was the whole journey. Because um, after the Lapa Lapa episode, there was always a, an extended family member who would come up with one name or the other. In fact, it metamorphosed to spiritual problem. So they tagged it a spiritual problem. I know in this part of the world, anything we don't know is automatically a spiritual problem. So that was when the frustration started. It started taking me from one pastor to another. And because most of these people, they're about what they can get into their pockets. They, they, they second, you know, and it was really traumatizing, you know. And I didn't know until after 10 years yeah, I didn't know it was alopecia until after 10 years. So I'll share a bit of my experience in that journey. Um, first, some pastor said, someone took my hair to the ocean. <laughs> That's why I don't have hair. But there are some sacrifices here and there that we could perform that would make my hair grow. So I had times that I killed cows, I had times that I killed chickens, there were times we just give out the cows raw, like the, the, the meat, the pieces, you know. 
raw like that. There were times we cook and, and feed people with it, just in the quest for my hair to grow back. And there were other ugly experiences I had to, ugly encounters I had of some spiritual men asking to have some form of um, intimacy with me before my hair could grow. Like it was really traumatizing. It was, it was, it was, it was annoying. It was frustrating because at some point I got depressed and I, I, I got to meet with a dermatologist who introduced some hairsprays to me that I used. It didn't work. And the moment I stopped using the spray, my hair fell off. In fact, at this point, I now lost my hair completely because the spray did not work. You understand? So it triggered some other hormones and then I lost my hair completely. So I became completely bald. You know, initially it was just in patches. And then after applying those sprays, I lost my hair completely. And I used that spray for a period of one year and six months. And at that time, a spray cost 15,000 Naira. So I must use a can, like I must buy a new can every fortnight. It was a fortnight thing. I was buying a new can every fortnight. And I administered it for a year and a half. But instead of it to get better, it got worse. And I still did not stop. I wanted the solution. I wanted my hair back. So I approached another dermatologist who placed me on the wrong medication. And because I was so desperate, I didn't even bother to ask, what is this thing you're placing me on? What is this medication for? I didn't know it was using me as a specimen. For every time I got 0.1 mg, I took five as a dose. For every time I got 0.5 mg, I took 10 as a dose. So that was an abuse. And I discovered that my memory was diminishing. So at that point, I had to stop but it had already caused some damage and I became depressed and I became suicidal as well. So at some point I became suicidal, I almost died because I, I, I made a suicidal attempt. But thank God my mother was at home on that particular day and she saved me. So it has been from one one bad encounter, one bad experience to another until 2015 when I decided I was going to do a personal research to know what exactly my problem was. And that was how I stumbled on the word alopecia on the internet. And I realized it was a condition or it is a condition. Like what, what, what I've been going through actually has a name and the name is alopecia. So that was how I got to know that the condition is alopecia. I started embracing myself in 2015. Yeah, that was when I did the personal research that I became aware. And okay, I stumbled on a particular lady's story online and I started following her up. Her daughter has alopecia and I saw the way she, she instilled confidence in her daughter at every stage that our daughter was encountering. Like, it started with bald patch. From one bald patch, it increased to patches. And then she lost almost everything and there were just few strands of hair left. I saw the way she would pack into, she would pack the hair into ponytail and go everywhere with it, you know? So I admired that. But I noticed that while I was doing my research, I didn't really see much of um, black people with the same condition, there were more of white people. And within me, I resolved that I could be a strength to other people, especially black people, who are going through this same experience, who are experiencing the same thing. Because looking back to how my journey started, it wasn't funny. And I, at that point, I knew there were people who were going through worse situation than what I went through. So I decided I was going to be a voice to other people. I was going to 
to stand my ground and create awareness. Though in the process of doing that, I opened up to a few persons, media personnel, who did not really understand my story and they made a mess of it because I wanted to, to do a come out video. You get so they made a mess of it and turned it to a comedy skit. That was when I knew there's really no bad publicity because that was when I met my deputy, Moshudat Badmosh. I, I was really sad about it because the, the whole thing went bad for me. You know, it went viral. A lot of people saw it. A lot of people misunderstood the message because they actually did not pass the message right. A lot of people misunderstood it. So it went sour. And she came on, on, online, saw the ridicule and everything, and she started fighting for me. So she was like the voice I didn't have at that downtime, at that point in time. So I approached her and I was like, you seem to know about alopecia. Do you have alopecia? She said, yes. You needed to see the joy that I felt that day. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel that kind of joy in, in 10 years. I was, I was so excited, I was so happy. I contacted her immediately, we started talking, and before you knew it, I was on my way to, then she was in Ogun State. I was on my way to Ogun State from Kaduna. I took a trip to Ogun State just to meet her because you know, it was relieving for you to see someone or know that there's someone who can relate you know, to whatever it is you were going through. Because at that, before then, people around me could not understand. There were times I, I, I wanted to talk, I wanted to just, you know, explain how I was feeling, but I, di I didn't have people to, to, to talk to because even when I talk, they don't understand. You understand? It was, it was more like a mental thing for me, but when I met her, it was relieving. I felt so much relief because um, she could relate. Yeah, she understood where I was coming from. And that was how the foundation journey started. The National Alopecia Areata Foundation states that alopecia affects about 147 million people in the world. And according to Africa Prime News, there are over 100,000 persons living with alopecia in Nigeria. It has not been easy running the Heroic Alopecia Foundation because, okay, one thing is for people to know what their condition is. Another thing is for them to come out, right? So, um, like I said, when I met um, Moshudat, that was when the foundation journey started. Uh, though I'd already started single-handedly before I met her, and then we took it, we took, we took the race together and we continued the race. Then some other members joined and we grew to about 13 member, members rather. And um, in the process, we, we got to know more. We got to know that alopecia is actually a journey. You get, some would accept the fact that this is what it is. Some may never accept it, but it's a good thing that you're aware that this is what the problem is, right? And we realize that a lot of people are out there suffering that don't know what this condition is, and they really need to know. Because um, if you know that you have a problem and you know what that problem is, I think your problem is all solved already. So what we do basically is try to reach out to people, try to create awareness. Thanks to BBC Pigeon, I was featured on BBC Pigeon last year, and as a result of that publicity, our members strength grew from 13 to 70. Yeah, so right now we have 70 members. Majority are Nigerians. We have few of them in Ghana, some in Sierra Leone, um, Cameroon, Senegal, America, London. So um, we still feel there's a need for us to create more awareness. Because if you'd ask for my opinion, I'll say only 2% of people in Nigeria are aware of this condition called alopecia. I think a lot has to be done, a lot needs to be done concerning awareness. Um, there was a training I went for recently at Nikkei Arts Gallery, and on the first few days of the training, 
I I didn't go with my wig. I didn't wear I didn't wear my wig, and um, nobody really paid attention to the fact that I don't have hair. I only got comments like, your hairstyle is nice. And because of what I went there for, I didn't have that time to explain to them that it's not a hairstyle, but a health condition. Until after five days, I decided to wear my wig. So I went there with a the wig. And after a while, I started feeling uncomfortable with my wig on, so I removed it. And people were like, eh, hey, it's better. You look better without your wig than with your wig. So another question popped up from somewhere from someone else that why 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 the hairstyle do what inspired the hairstyle? And I told them it's not a hairstyle, but it's a health condition. So I that that got a lot of people's attention and they're like, oh really, it's a health condition. Tell us about it. So while I was talking, I heard whispers of two persons arguing about one top wear somewhere that has a similar condition and the other person said no 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 it's not the same top wear's case is, is is spiritual you know they were they were they were arguing in their dialect in kaba actually so i heard and i paused and asked why did you say top wear's condition is spiritual he said because hers is not completely of like mine, she has um, patches and all. I say yes, the the, the, the patch is, is is a form of alopecia actually. Like there are different types of alopecia. Hers is um, alopecia areata. That's the medical term for her condition. And they're like, oh really? I say yes. So I went as far as explaining to them that there's also a condition called alopecia totalis where it's just limited to the hair to the head alone you know the hair loss is limited to the head alone and um, i also explained about alopecia universalis where the victim lose the lashes the, um, the brows and every other part of the body that has hair and they were amazed so when they told me a lot about Tokwe, I told them I was interested in meeting Tokwe. But guess what? Tokwe is dead. Tokwe died as a result of isolation. Tokwe died as a result of stigmatization. I also heard of a story of one of the story of one woman in Benue State that died as a result of stigmatization. She was she was tagged a witch because her hair stopped growing and she was isolated, far away from people, you know, they stopped giving her food and that was how she died. I also heard of some girls in Benin who were constantly tied and flogged with broom because they have alopecia. And at the moment, we have two parents in Kaduna who are representing their sons because they are, they are, they are kids. One is six years old, the other one is seven. There's this belief in the north. When strange things happen to you, they just assume you have Anjanu. Like a spiritual problem, like evil spirits. I think Anjanu is evil spirits. And they, they, they kept burning their scalps with fire. That they are chasing away the Anjanu until they met me. Someone actually told me about them and I went to visit the family. So when I got there, and I removed my wig, I saw the relief. You know, there was this sigh of relief that, oh, okay, so this thing is not happening to our son alone. There are other people who have this thing. And it's a medical condition, you understand? So a, a, lot, a lot needs to be done concerning awareness. Alopecia can affect anyone regardless of age and gender. And in many cases, it takes a toll on their relationships. To an extent, alopecia has affected my relationship with people because I remember back then in school, when, when it started at first, I, I didn't start covering it immediately. I still rocked it. And after a while, I started covering it with a scarf. And my friends were, were surprised, like, when did you start covering your, your hair? You were not like this, what's the problem? And some of them just tried to be naughty and they pulled the scalp off. And when they realized that there was something strange about my head, some gave space. The naughty ones tagged, tagged it a name. Some started calling me an alien. Like when I applied the spray and every, I, everything fell off, like I lost, every strand of hair on my body. I'm talking about my lashes, my brows, every part of my body, I didn't have hair. 
I had a friend who was constantly calling me an alien, like to my face, and people would laugh about it. It became embarrassing at some point. And then relationship, yeah, I had a major relationship then that failed as a result of alopecia because my supposed to be mother-in-law um, called off the wedding introduction, three days the wedding introduction because of fear of the unknown. You know, she didn't want a situation whereby her grandchildren would have um, hair loss problems. So she called off the wedding introduction, not minding how far we had gone and then the preparation for the event and all that. And the last um, disappointed, disappointment I, I got to was as a result of alopecia because I went for a consultation with the person I was dating at that time and he had all the medical advice I got about me, like the, the, the dermatologist advised that I should not bother myself because at this stage, at this, this point, the, the hair loss has really, um, it has gotten to an advanced stage where I might not, my hair might not grow anymore, you understand? So he heard all of that and his countenance changed on our way home. So out of curiosity, I tried to question him about his mood and everything. And he said he's scared, doesn't want to raise kids that would not have hair. So to a great extent, alopecia has affected my relationship with people. Alopecia has really affected my family in a lot of ways. Like my mom, right now, she still does not accept the fact that it is a medical condition. She's yet to come to terms with the fact that it's a medical condition. She still feels that there's more to it and the hair would grow. Yes, the hair could grow because alopecia actually has a mind of its own. The way it decides to go off, like the way your hair decides to go off, it could just decide to start growing overnight. That's another mysterious thing about alopecia because it has to do with your immune system. So your, your immune system might just decide, okay, I want, to, I want to be good, I want to be perfect. And then your hair starts growing again, you understand? So um, it has really affected my family because I remember when I didn't know what it was, I was constantly being stigmatized because my, my mother would always have a scarf or a cap or something beside her. And the moment someone knocks at the door, she's throwing it at me to cover my head. I didn't like that part. I didn't like the fact that I could not just be myself, you know, and feel free like every other person. I didn't like the fact that I have to always cover my, my head you know and another thing is I be, it became a prayer request like till now it's still a prayer request everyone is always praying at some point at one point or the other for my hair to grow back yeah so it has really affected my my family not just me one in 20 people with alopecia also has a family member who has experienced the condition which implies that most people that have alopecia usually don't have family members with this condition. I'm not too sure that the awareness is really there. Um, having said so, they, they, I mean, if we think about the patients who come into the clinic, alopecia is, uh, at least what I would say, some studies have shown that it's uh, one of the top 10 dermatology uh, consultations. And because the world is generally getting more visual, everybody's more concerned about our appearance, and we talk about quality of life and all this. So you're seeing a lot more patients coming in. They're coming in. Ariata in itself, more, a lot of people don't know. I don't think the awareness is really, really there. But remember that when you're dealing with a specialty, so if you talk in the general population, maybe no. But if you come into the specialty community, specialty hospital, we'll see we have a pretty, you know, a high enough number of cases. But I would say if you just ask for the general population, no. And so to the next question of how can we make them more aware sort of what you're doing. If we have people who suffer from, I remember that because of the stigma of alopecia, everybody knows that a woman's hair is supposed to be like her crowning glory. She wants to do things with it. She wants to look well. You don't really want to cover it. 
but with wigs and weaves, nobody knows who uh, who has one. Now a lot of women will just take it out on you. So you don't know who has the problem because of the stigma or the quality of life. Very, very significant impact on the quality of life. So people are hiding. People are not able to get and some of some people go to those who don't really know what to do. Some people, the salon, uh, the hairstylist, who should almost be like your first sort of, oh, madam or, or girl, as the case may be, what's happening to your hair? And do you think you need to see somebody? Most times they might give you their own version of what they think works, and the hair loss is worse now. Where ideally, if you present early enough in a refugee area, you may just be able to break that autoimmunity. Alopecia often develops suddenly over the course of just a few days. This condition affects the mental health of the victims and sometimes makes them withdrawn. Dealing with stigmatization before I became aware was not easy. I had days that I cried, I had days I didn't want to see anybody. Like I locked myself up in the room for days, for weeks. There were days I didn't want to see my immediate family members, my downtime and all as a result of stigmatization. Like I mentioned earlier that there was a time I was depressed, it was as a result of stigmatization because I felt stigmatized by everybody, even those that were close to me. You know, as, at, at, at every point in time, I was expecting people to show me love. So at every moment that I don't, um, at every, every, every time that I don't get that kind of love that I expect, you know, I feel stigmatized. So it was, it was really ugly for me. But the moment I got to know that this is what it is, I became free. You know, I got some form of liberty, I got some form of liberation, and, and I, I don't get stigmatized anymore. So when people try to mock me now, I just laugh at their ignorance. And if I have the opportunity to educate them, I don't hesitate. Alopecia can cause a lot of anxiety and sadness. It is important we have more support groups in the society to help people living with alopecia deal with the psychological effects of this condition.